the body keeps the score. The idea that the body will hold on to all of the unprocessed emotions that we have is pretty real, but we don't always think about it. When we don't fully process our emotions, the body will remember that for us, maybe for a later time. It's a really helpful and good protective mechanisms. Welcome to Mental Fortress Monday. I'm Dr. Cheryl Carthouse, naturopathic doctor, and today we're going to focus on Mental Fortress Mondays here to understand how the body can reflect our unprocessed emotions and how we can actually make a few little changes in order to overcome certain types of physical issues or at least alleviate a particular level or layer to a physical ailment. So there are many practitioners who know this idea. The idea that when we have a particular experience, the body experiences it first, and then our mind actually experiences the emotion afterwards. Anything that we don't really fully process from that situation is maintained as a residual, remem- or as a residual memory in the body. There is a book called The Body Keeps a Score, and I love that title, and I've referred to it a number of times because of how powerful it is and because of how much it explains in just that one sentence. There's lots of practitioners, though, who have over the years understood this side of of trauma, of our emotions, of how we experience things, and really tried to focus on it in terms of healing modalities, in terms of different things that we can do to actually help the body process and let go of particular types of physical ailments, but also to help our mental emotional state and to go forward really living a better life and a better quality of life, which is what we're here for, what I'm here for with you today and what, you know, a lot of us in the healthcare field are focused on trying to actually achieve. So the idea that if we have a particular experience and an emotion associated with it or an emotion that allows it to then sort of creep in, that we allow sort of this emotion to residually be held in the body, we will feel it and can experience it at some point physically. And with that, I believe that this can happen with positive emotions and with negative emotions. The tricky part is that with positive emotions, maybe it makes us stronger. And so we may experience that as much more of a positive influence. And if it's a negative emotion or something that's unprocessed, we experience it more as a negative thing within our body, maybe a weakness, a susceptibility, an injury, or maybe a susceptibility to re-injury, whatever it might be. In terms of the people who've contributed to this idea and these lines of work, there's been some theories or some understanding of what body parts even carry different types of emotions. Sometimes we get these more from cultural or even religious perspectives. And then there are other people who have uh, medical licenses and are psychiatrists and whatnot, uh, similar to Bessel um, Bessel van der Kolk, who actually wrote that body or that book, The Body Keeps a Score. Um, and he is a psychiatrist who has had a ton of experience as a medical doctor and a psychiatrist working with trauma and abandonment and depression. And it, so we have a wide range of all these people with personal traumatic experiences who have really come out of it and are living a better life and provide some information to these. And then we have these on the other spectrum, people who are more formally educated, who've understood the body in a different way and understood the mind in a different way and have really seen when we're coming out of trauma or trying to process trauma, there's a big change and a big difference to being able to work with the body versus just trying to focus on working with the mind and being able to let go things that way. So what do we, what have we learned or what have I pulled out from some of the literature and from some of the experiences from reading, maybe getting to know some other people who've had other experiences like this too? One, the idea that body, the body gives us really important information. Two, that we feel and experience 
what is in our body before we actually think the thought or the emotion. Three, that we need to fully process all of the emotions, especially when they're related to a physical injury, in order to have an injury heal or in order for a susceptibility to re -in of re-injury to actually strengthen. The good news is that we can fully process emotions. It's just tricky and it's hard and it's usually very uncomfortable. And so we tend to steer away from those types of things. So how do we actually achieve this of being able to understand what our physical body is telling us in these particular times of emotional stress or even trauma? And the big key that I've found is by having an understanding of baseline. So when we know what the body actually is doing or we have a baseline for our body, then we can understand if it strays. So yes, we experience stress and how do you, if you think of it, how do you experience stress? Usually there's a sign or there's some version of a sensation in the body. Sometimes we pay attention to it, sometimes we don't. And then there'll be lots of other thoughts and lots of other consequences of it. Sometimes we shut down, sometimes we're more engaged, whatever that could be, whatever our default is or whatever the situation affords because we may act differently in different circumstances. So the idea that our body will let us know even before we think the thoughts of something bad happening or some version of a traumatic incident happening, even happy things, but we're going to focus on the negative because that's usually what runs us into trouble. And so I want to tell you guys a little story that I experienced this week that made this idea is super salient to me. So I was dog sitting for a friend, um, a dog that I don't know super well. And I was taking it for a walk. I went, we went for a run around the block and I had the leash wrapped around my hand and cause she pulls a lot. And so I had the leash wrapped around my hand. She also goes completely berserk when she sees other dogs, which I've sort of experienced before, but not in the same way. Uh, and having this dog, which is a fairly large dog, definitely weighs more than me. She's pure muscle. She has, you know, her instincts of I'm going to go do this. And this is really important. So leash is wrapped around my hand, going for a run. And she starts to take off when she sees these other dogs also being walked across the street. She dragged me across the rubble gravel that I couldn't pull back. I couldn't stop her from just wrenching my arm forward and pulling me and it, the leash squished my hands and it unraveled a little bit around my fingers. Um, and she just tugged me essentially the whole way, dragging me, trying to not follow my face, uh, towards these other dogs. And I felt the whole time throughout this, I was trying to grab her and felt, um, really badly for the other people trying to keep their dogs obviously away from my barking dog and the emotions that I really tried to pay attention to or notice not so much in the moment but at least right after we left that circumstance right after the encounter with the dogs was done and we're walking now and trying to finish our walk I felt super embarrassed. I felt super stressed. I, because I wasn't sure, you know, what would happen if these dogs interacted, because I don't know this dog very well. And the biggest things were though, it was paying attention to my emotions. I could feel my whole body feeling hot. I'm sure I was, you know, flushed or embarrassed in different ways. Embarrassment was a big one that came up because I felt like I should have done something different, or I felt like I should have known something different. And it's interesting that Sometimes we have these experiences of, I, I shoulda, shoulda, woulda, coulda, but we haven't maybe experienced that before, or maybe we have, and we haven't quite learned the lesson or been able to shift into a new behavior, or maybe we've just never, ever learned it. And so it's to be, I can, ju you can justify it in so many different ways. You know, I'm telling myself like, oh, it's totally fine, Cheryl. You have never taken her for a walk before. Like this is, it's okay to have all of these feelings. And that's all true, but the justification doesn't help the emotion that I was feeling to be processed. It helps me to feel better sort of in the moment. And it helps my mind to keep going almost with these busy thoughts. And so 
what I really tried to do that morning was sit with those emotions that I was experiencing, which was more embarrassment and shame and feeling my hand like it was half torn apart from the leash and understanding how the body basically gave me these signs or, you know, the, the feelings or the emotions before I really even thought about them. And then I had to sit with them and really think about what are all of these emotions that I'm like physically experiencing. Cause all these sensations are coming up in my body. And I just felt like I wanted to keep running to try and let all of this stuff out, which is actually also a really great way to let things out of the body. So being able to attach the emotions to that experience for me was a bit of an epiphany because I had a physical injury and my determination with this, knowing that when we have a particular emotion around a scenario, around a situation, and we have a physical experience, those two can be tightly linked. So I wanted to make my injury to my hand as physical as possible and unlayer or unbury it from any type of emotional types of experiences that I was having at the time. So if we have an experience where it's super embarrassing, we might feel a lot of shame or any of these other difficult emotions, it can essentially sort of be held in the body at the same, at the same space that we experience it. So my thought process was, if I don't process some of these emotions, I wonder how long my hand will take to heal. Or maybe it's going to be one of these injuries that from that moment on, yeah, it heals for perfectly well. And then it just kind of happens to be one of these achy things, or it sort of keeps re-injuring itself in the future. Every time I do this and that, it, it starts to really aggravate. So we have a lot of tools at the clinic. So I injected it with ozone uh, or had my, my ND injected with ozone, um, did a few other techniques on it. I, re- I meditated with the emotions that I had and just sat with those sensations because I made the space for it. I didn't really have time, but I made the time for it and made the space because I really wanted to make sure it wasn't going to be attached or get ingrained. And I let that kind of sit for a day or two. And then I felt like it maybe wasn't healing as fast as I wanted it to. And so I went and saw my ND again, and we did an emotional processing technique to help further release any type of emotions that might have been tied into my hand. And it ended up not being about an embarrassment or shame from that experience. It ended up being about something else as well that maybe I was thinking on the walk, you know, at the time, maybe that's one of the things that led to the susceptibility of my hand being injured because we're not paying attention when we're not as mindful. We tend to drop more things or be more clumsy or tend to run into more things. So there's so many different layers and different playing on how the thoughts that we're thinking and our emotions can end up influencing our physical health, either through a particular emotional attachment to actual physical injury or maybe it's something that is allowing that body again to be susceptible in a particular way. Let me know if you guys have questions about that. The biggest thing that I found allowed this little epiphany in my mind was the idea that I knew what my baseline was. I could feel the sensations right away and I could catch them. And that helped me to understand how big of an emotion I was experiencing, how much shame and how much embarrassment I felt from not being able to control this dog. And being able to make that one notice was the biggest thing that helped me then to understand and lead to all of the other things that I did um, to help this particular injury at the time. And so the mindfulness practice has been a huge, huge, huge help for me in terms of how it's making a difference for these types of things, which is why I share it. And so if you will with me, get comfortable. If you're happy seated and you have your time to be seated, that is ideal. And we're just gonna start with the breath. So if you can pay attention to breathing Noticing the breath move in and out of your nose. And 
and just getting quiet and really taking the time is super important. Even just a few minutes. And just paying attention to the breath, moving in and out of your nose. And feeling any of the sensations that you ex can experience between your nose and your upper lip. And if you feel like your mind's really going or it wants to keep talking, this is one of the ones that's the easiest to do. It can really help to calm and quiet the mind. And it's something that you always have with you. And when you feel like your mind is settled a little bit, bring your attention up to the tip top of your head. And just bring your awareness there. And if you have a hard time feeling that spot, just place your finger on it and give a little bit of pressure so that you can pay attention to that pressure. And we often try to sensationalize what an emotion or what a sensation might actually feel like or what it's supposed to feel like. And it's just exactly what you're experiencing it doesn't have to be special in some way it's just pressure or it's just the sensations that you're experiencing and then melt your awareness down over your face and down over your head Maybe the sides of your head or the back of your head. And just notice any sensations there. You may be moving your awareness then down the front side of your body. Down one arm and then down the other. Moving your awareness all the way out to your fingertips and just paying attention to the sensations of your body as they are right now, not trying to change anything. And then bring your awareness up to the other shoulder and then down your arm all the way out to your fingertips. And then down the front side of your body, maybe starting at your neck and moving down your chest and your abdomen and all sides of your abdomen and your body. Down into your pelvis just taking the time that you need. If I'm going too quickly, you can go slower. If I'm going too slow, you can move quicker. We're just paying attention to the sensations and letting them be exactly as they are without judgment. Not trying to place any particular meaning to them or understanding or identification components like this is pain or this is uncomfortable. Just trying to let go of any thoughts around the particular sensation that you experience. And then moving your awareness up to the back of your neck and then down your back one vertebrae at a time. And moving across from left to right and then back from right to left, covering all sides of the back.
And some sensations are going to be easier to feel than others. And then moving down towards your sit bones. Maybe if you're sitting, you feel the floor, the cushion, or the seat underneath you. And you can move your awareness down one leg. Out to your knee and then all the way out to your toes. And then starting at the other hip, same thing, moving your awareness down one leg, down to your knee, and then all the way out to your toes. And then when you're ready, just change your awareness and start from the tips of your toes and start moving all the way up your body. Maybe we do both legs at the same time. If that seems too confusing or you feel like you can't pay attention to those, just do one leg at a time. Starting at your toes, moving up your leg. And all the way up to your hip. And then up your spine, moving across from the left and right sides all the way up your spine to the back of your neck. And the order doesn't matter. And keep going up your head if you'd like. Maybe around the back of your head and down the front of your face. And then we find ourselves at our arms again, maybe down each shoulder, maybe we do them together. And then down the front side of your body, covering your chest and your abdomen. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes if they were closed, wiggle your fingers and toes. I would love to hear your experiences and the idea of what you think of how our emotions are attached to our physical body and how we might actually end up holding on to our stresses and those emotions that we don't fully process. And if you get a chance, check out some books related to this. It can be really, can be really, really helpful, really mind blowing and eye opening. And even further, if you're excited to get some support with it, seek out someone who does this kind of work. Have a great week.